three of my anorexia story and it's going to cover my life post hospitalization in the last 10 years so i'm 29 now and i was discharged from an adult specialist eating disorders unit when i was 19. so i left hospital in late 2007 and i had a place at cardiff university for 2008 to study psychology and i basically took like a recovery gap year i took a year out to just make sure i was well enough like uni was such a big goal for me and i so wanted to go well and have fun and so i just took time for myself to make sure i was able to do that and it was hard to be honest like you can get quite used to being a patient and being cared for in hospital and having the like routine of hospital life so coming out and getting into real life can be really tough. So I got a job in a local pub restaurant. I started hanging out with a new group of friends that I'd made, which was really nice. They were people I like really gelled with and got on with, and it wasn't like a weight focused group of friends. So that was nice for me. That was a very like, oh my God, there is a life outside of eating disorders, hospitals and body image. I started doing more like normal age appropriate things with them, like drinking, going to music festivals, which was really fun. We went on a few camping trips and there were still some behaviours I was really needing to work on as well, like not eating weirdly. Like I wanted to be able to eat with these friends that I'd made. So not cutting things up small or separating or taking an hour to eat my dinner. And to be honest, I don't think hospital helps with these things sometimes because you're surrounded by people who share disordered eating habits and the staff allow you an hour to eat your food. And I came to learn that like, I had to take an hour to eat my food. If I ate it quicker, I was being greedier than they were expecting me to be. Another really big problem was they let us go for a walk after our meals every single day, like a 20 minute round the block walk. So I came to learn, okay, I have to take a 20 minute walk every day after my meal, because if a professional's told me this is what I can do, then I'm greedy and lazy and fat if I stop doing it. So part of the difficulty in getting back into life is how kind of institutionalised and routine a hospital can make you. But I was looking at my friends and being like, no one's going for a walk when they finish their food or no one's separating crap out on their plate. No one's taking an hour to eat. And I was so desperate to just fit in and be normal that I was like, no, like these behaviours have to stop. So in this year at home, I really did dedicate myself to like normalising things as much as possible. And there were some things which I didn't normalize, like some of the foods that I was still scared of and rules that I had, like I definitely, when I went to uni, I definitely still had some odd eating disorder rules in place, which I can kind of see now leaves like a foot in the door for anorexia and down the line I have relapsed. But anyway, I turned 20 in August, 2008 and then went off to Cardiff in that September and uni literally changed my life. I like met a group, oh, I literally feel like I'm gonna get emotional again. It's just because school was so miserable and I so didn't fit in and uni was just, if I'd have known in school what uni could have felt like for me and what fitting in and meeting people that are like-minded could feel like, I do wish I would have known that, but anyway. So I met some really awesome people, not body image focused at all. We just had fun, like we were proper students, going out, partying, drinking, missing too many lectures. I really let go of my perfectionism. I wasn't trying to get top grades all the time. I was much more focused on meeting people and having a good time. I got a boyfriend who was really lovely, which I could never have imagined doing in school. I joined the psychology netball team. I went to America for a summer to do a Camp America. I worked in a Pennsylvanian Girl Scout camp, which was fun. I had lions, I got takeaways, like I honestly just had a really good time. And it's not to say it was all easy, like I was in a gap year building and everyone was talking about the travels they'd done on their gap year, like, oh, where have you been? Where have you been? And I was like, at home recovering from anorexia. <laughs> I didn't tell them that. When inside, really, I was like, you have no idea what I've done with my year and what I've achieved. I kind of just thought like, everyone has a different path and whatever i'm not them it got me in a good place to enjoy university halfway through my degree i kind of felt like i didn't have much direction so i took a year out to work for a year and i ended up getting recruited then for my graduate role and i almost managed to get through the whole of uni without obsessing about my grades and needing to get a first until right at the end i kind of freaked out and thought oh my god no i have to be the best and I didn't lose weight and completely relapse back into that old cycle, but I put in an awful lot of work at the end of my degree. But I guess I'd still managed to like have fun and work hard, so maybe I was 
striking some kind of balance between the best of both worlds, I don't know. <laughs> but whatever, I left in 2012 and I was healthy, happy, and I had my job ready. So I was on a graduate scheme in HR and it was a rotational program. So I've done three rotations in three different countries, which was amazing. Like the opportunity has been incredible. And I'm just so glad that I kept myself well during uni because I never would have been in that situation if I'd have turned to anorexia and become like isolated, rigid, controlled, unwell, like it just wouldn't have been possible. So my first rotation was in Malaysia. I lived in Kuala Lumpur with a really good friend. And again, we just had a brilliant year. We had so much fun. We traveled any opportunity. We went out a lot, made friends with loads of Irish people, started playing Gaelic football, which is the most bizarre sport in the world. <laughs> It's like a cross between rugby and basketball and football. It's really odd. I actually ended up playing for Kuala Lumpur in the Southeast Asia Games in Singapore. <laughs> what the hell? And I was rubbish. Honestly, I was like really scared of the ball. So God knows how I made the team. That actually sounds a lot better than it was. I think they were just short of players and they didn't have enough Irish people. So they were like, get her involved. <laughs> but yeah, generally life was good and I was happy and getting on with things. But... <laughs> I still had a lot of rules and fears and anorexia still definitely had its foot in the door. It's almost like I was taking a break from illness and just trying life for a little bit, but still within an anorexic bubble. So whatever you want to call this, like quasi recovery, partial recovery, like relative to where I'd come from, I was doing brilliant and I was out in the world. But the thing is, it's easy to be recovered when life's easy. The real test in your recovery is like when you have challenges and stresses and bumps in the road, which is a really normal part of life. And do you stay well during those times or do these food rules and phobias that you've held on to get worse and worse? And that's what happened to me. So between 25 and 29, I had my next two rotations with my job, which were in Dubai and New York. And I relapsed in both of those places. So in 2014, I moved to Dubai on my own. I didn't have this amazing girl that I'd had in Malaysia and I was really lonely and I didn't really like the rotation, the job that I was doing at the time. So I didn't have that sense of like purpose and meaningfulness in my life. And that's it, to be honest, there wasn't a huge trigger that made me relapse. I just wasn't comfortable in life and I wasn't having this fun, lovely life that I'd been having. And I really struggled. And within the first couple of months of getting there, I turned back to the old way of coping, the thing that I was good at, the thing that could give me that little buzz inside because I wasn't getting it in normal life and I wasn't feeling great. So I basically just turned to my own little world for comfort. But because I'd had a taste of life, I could kind of see what was happening and I, like, I didn't want to go back to it again. I just didn't know another way to cope. I basically just hadn't learned coping mechanisms in recovery. Also, when I moved to Dubai, I met Brendan at the very beginning and basically fell for him straight away. He was like the best person I'd ever met. Oh, she's licking her. <laughs> so I had a lot of like confusion during this time and not knowing which way to go. Like I wasn't happy with work and I was a bit lonely, but I kind of wanted to be with Brendan. It was, it was confusing. And it took us a while to get together because I was so like I was getting locked back into myself to be honest so it took about five months of me being forwards and backwards between like getting ill staying well I didn't know what I was doing and then we did get together and I then went to get treatment because I was like no like this is a good thing in my life and I can't go back there like I knew what it was going to do to me and what it would have taken away from me I loved being with Brendan so yeah I knew I didn't want to go back there so I went to get help and I was really lucky and I got incredible treatment in Dubai and I worked with my psychologist on CBTE, which is Cognitive Behavioural Therapy Enhanced. So it's designed for eating disorders and targeting food rules. So I was getting to a much better place when I left Dubai and my body was the healthiest it had ever been. I was kind of trying to embrace this set point thing for your body and let, basically let my body decide where it was healthy and not try to force it to be the way I wanted it to be. And through CBT, I had less rules and phobias, but I'd still held on to some, which was not good. And then the end of my role came and I had a new job starting in New York. But at this time, my stepdad got very sick. So I went home for a couple of months with my brother and sister. And sadly, my stepdad died about a year and a half ago.
So for the first half of the year in New York, I managed okay. I was trying these new coping mechanisms and I did keep my weight up. I also didn't have any help at all whilst I was there. And looking back, maybe I'd like stopped it too quickly with like changes going on in life. <laughs> and then in December, 2016, Brendan actually proposed to me in New York. It's amazing. It's like in Central Park, all in the snow. It was beautiful and amazing. And so that was great. Like I was so, so happy with that. But here came a big trigger for me, the wedding dress. Like for any girl fitting into a certain dress on a certain day and having any everyone look at you, silly. Yeah, I think it's hard for anyone, but I'd recently joined the gym. And so I thought like, right, I'm not going to do what I used to do. I'm just going to go to the gym and get myself like fit and healthy and strong. And like, then I'll just look nice and healthy in my wedding dress. But then I also hit a period at work where my job was getting very uncertain and I didn't know what was going to be happening. And so I had a lot of like anxiety and just general like feeling of being unsettled. And I don't know, it just all started again. And the last six months that I was in New York, I relapsed again. And so I'm back seeing my psychologist now, which I'm so like fortunate for and so grateful for. And she's doing more CBTE with me and a program called Mantra from the Maudsley Hospital. And I guess to try and see the positive again, like learn from this relapse, I am not the sort of person that can dabble with dieting or the gym or looking a certain way on a certain day for a certain dress. Like, I just think that's totally off limits for me. Which to be honest, I don't think anyone should be dabbling in stuff like that. Like diet culture sucks, but certainly I don't really seem to have an off switch for it. <laughs> I just really want to get to a point in recovery that's a bit more resilient and can handle life's shit basically. And also I think this time I want to challenge those last few food rules and phobias because as long as anorexia has got its little foot in the door somehow, it's always just waiting for a day when it can like, a yoink, <laughs> snatch you back from life. And I suppose looking at the positives, like I have come a long way in recovery and from the days of totally resisting treatment and hiding things and only relying on myself to then wanting help and reaching out for it, even though I hated it sometimes and didn't always want it, but I knew I wanted to be in life. And I guess now I am kind of in life. I just need to like let go of that last little bit. And, and of course the other big positive is like people watching these videos and if they are helping and there's anything I can do or like talk to people, share what I've learned from my psychologist and the amazing treatment that I have had, then I really, I love that I can do that. So, so I hope these videos give like a bit more context on me, help you get to know me better. They've not been the easiest to make. It's kind of uncomfortable. Like I'd never want it to seem like I'm showing off with being ill, which sounds weird, but I've also relapsed to not like hugely low weights and nothing close to my lowest weight, but been really ill with eating disorder and it's completely consumed my life and thoughts and just really screwed things up. All experiences and all struggles with eating disorders are valid and they're real and they will ruin your life. Like you don't need to be in a critical BMI zone or read on a chart or lying on a hospital bed. Like if you're suffering, you're suffering and that's valid. And if you don't do something to change, you'll spend your whole life suffering. So yeah, just keep going with your own recovery, whatever stage you're at, like it can get better and it does get better. And just good luck to everyone out there and thanks for watching.